Seen script. Ever wondered why Rocket League ended trading? Well, let's take a little trip down memory lane. Rocket League, a high-octane blend of soccer and vehicular mayhem, introduced a trading system that created quite a stir among its players. This was a world where gamers could swap and barter, dealing in dazzling decals, shiny wheels, and oh-so-rare rocket boosts. It was a playground for the ambitious, a market for the collectors, and a treasure trove for those simply wanting to get their hands on some cool in-game items. Imagine the thrill of nabbing that elusive black market decal, or the satisfaction of completing your collection of exotic wheels. The trading system brought an extra layer of excitement, a new dimension to the Rocket League experience. It was more than just a game, it was a bustling trading community. But as we know, this trading system didn't last forever. Let's delve into why. The trading system in Rocket League, unfortunately, had a dark side. As the trading system gained popularity, it also started attracting the attention of some unsavory characters. These were people who saw an opportunity to exploit the system and the trust of the players for their own gain. The rise of scams within the trading system was a troubling development that started to cast a long shadow over the community. There were a few high-profile cases that brought this issue to the forefront. We had the infamous Phantom Particle Scam, where a player promised to trade a rare Phantom Particle item, only to switch it out with a common item at the last second. Then there was the Double Painted Scam, where players were tricked into believing they were getting a double painted item, when in reality they were getting a single painted item. These scams took advantage of the system's lack of oversight and the player's trust. Players would enter a trade filled with excitement and anticipation, only to leave with a sense of betrayal and loss. The impact of these scams was felt deeply within the community. It wasn't just about the loss of valuable items. It was about the loss of trust and the sense of camaraderie that had been a cornerstone of the Rocket League community. The toll these scams took on the community was significant. It wasn't just the individual players who were affected, the entire community felt the sting. The trust that had been built within the community started to erode, and players became more wary and sceptical. The joy of trading started to be replaced with a sense of apprehension and suspicion. Moreover, these scams started to tarnish the reputation of the game. Rocket League was no longer just a fun and exciting game. It was also a game where players had to be on constant guard against scams. The game's reputation started to take a hit, and the developers were forced to take notice. These scams weren't just damaging to the players involved, they started to take a toll on the game's reputation. With the rise of scams, Rocket League's developers had to intervene. It was a challenging situation that required immediate action. They couldn't just stand by and watch their players fall victim to these disheartening tactics. The first course of action was to ramp up security measures. The developers worked tirelessly to implement new systems and protocols designed to protect players from potential scams. They enlisted the help of advanced detection algorithms to identify and flag suspicious activity, creating a safer environment for all players. In addition to these technical solutions, the developers also took steps to educate the player community. They created resources and guides to help players recognize and avoid scams. Players were advised on how to safely conduct trades and were given tips on how to identify potential red flags. Despite these efforts, the problem persisted. The developers faced an uphill battle struggling to keep pace with the ever-evolving tactics of scammers. It was a game of cat and mouse, with each new security measure met with a new scamming strategy. Moreover, there was a limit to what they could control. They couldn't monitor every single trade or interaction, and they couldn't prevent players from ignoring their advice. The responsibility to stay safe also fell on the players. Despite their best efforts, the problem persisted, leading to a drastic decision. In an effort to protect its players and its reputation, Rocket League made a shocking move. The trading system, a once integral part of the Rocket League experience, was abruptly shut down. The decision was met with a cacophony of reactions. Some players lauded the move as a step towards a safer, more equitable gaming environment. They saw it as a bold measure to eradicate scams, to level the playing field, and to return focus to the core of the game, the thrill of the play, 
the finesse of the maneuver, the exhilaration of the goal. However, there were also those who were less enthusiastic. These players viewed trading as an essential part of the Rocket League experience. They reveled in the thrill of the trade, the satisfaction of a well-negotiated deal, the pride of a well-curated collection. To them, the end of trading was akin to the loss of a beloved game feature. Regardless of the reaction, the impact on the game was undeniable. The landscape of Rocket League shifted, the focus returned to skill and strategy, to teamwork and tactics. The game was, once again, about the game. And that, my friends, is the story of why Rocket League ended trading. A decision made in the name of safety and fairness, reminding us that in gaming as in life, not everything that glitters is gold.